Hi, my name is Justin Milner, and I'm a managing director of the Pay for Success Initiative at the Urban Institute. In America's towns, cities, and states, government agencies fund a wide range of social programs that aim to improve outcomes for citizens. Outcomes like stable housing, increased employment, and better education. Yet many of these programs have relatively little evidence behind them. We often don't know whether they are all that effective at delivering the results we want. And changing the status quo isn't easy. Trying something new and innovative carries risks and costs for government agencies with no guarantee of success. To break this status quo, what might be needed are new disruptive innovations, mechanisms that help shift that risk, elevate the role of evidence, and bring together a range of different partners. One potential candidate is something called pay for success. Pay for success, sometimes called social impact bonds, is still a relatively new concept. But in other countries, such as the United Kingdom and Australia, and a handful of places in the US, pay for success projects are getting attention as a way to deliver better outcomes for communities. Pay for success works like this. An outside funder, like a foundation or a bank, provides capital to cover the upfront costs of a social program. The program is implemented by a service provider, and if the program meets or exceeds pre-agreed outcome targets, the government repays the funder with interest. In theory, pay for success deals can be win, win, win. Better outcomes for vulnerable populations, stable funding for service providers, and potential cost savings for government. Let's look at an example. Say you live in Denver. It's a great place to live. You have the Rocky Mountains, fresh air, powder during the ski season, and the Broncos are the 2016 world champions. But like a lot of American cities, Denver faces challenges serving its homeless citizens. The city isn't interested in a short-term solution that only gets people off the streets for a few nights. It would rather have a lasting solution that helps people turn their lives around. But it's complicated. Nobody wakes up one morning to discover there's no roof over their head. There are often many simultaneous issues at play. Ultimately, many chronically homeless people cycle in and out of shelters, emergency rooms, and jail, creating not only a moral challenge for cities, but an expensive one. And none of these are good long-term answers. Researchers have been studying for years what works in fighting homelessness. And from this growing mountain of evidence, a potential solution has arisen, permanent supportive housing. The evidence not only suggests that this solution works, it offers lessons on the best way to deliver it to recipients. So now Denver has a potential solution for a better way to fight homelessness, but it still has a different problem. Programs like permanent supportive housing carry expensive upfront costs that can be daunting. Even if you have all the evidence in the world, it's still scary to take that risk, especially if you're a cash-strapped local government. But what if there was a way that private funders and philanthropies could pay for the upfront costs of a potentially game-changing supportive housing program? What would that look like and why would they do it? This is where Pay for Success comes in. From Denver's perspective, by shifting the program's financial risk to these outside funders, a major barrier to adopting innovative solutions is lowered and a promising new intervention gets funded. From an investor's perspective, they're betting on potential solutions to their community's woes in the hopes of seeing problems get resolved while also potentially earning a return on their investment. Once the program is fully implemented, Denver and its partners are ready to evaluate. The evaluation, in turn, yields evidence on whether the program met its target outcomes and whether those outcomes prove the program is a bona fide success. On top of that, the evaluation adds to that mountain of permanent supportive housing evidence and deepens the understanding of policymakers in Denver and beyond. Bottom line, more people will know more about what works and what doesn't so that other cities can build on what Denver did. This example from Denver, which is based on a real-world project, demonstrates how governments can overcome a status quo where evidence-based programs are rare. Even better, the Pay for Success project shows how research can inform policy and practice 
in three critical ways. By looking at the evidence base to find a solution, to inform project design and implementation, and to expand the broader evidence base of what works through further evaluation. In our quest to make evidence-based policymaking and government the new status quo, Pay for Success is a potentially powerful new path forward.